fall, and they hope plenty more as the Blue Devils stand on the verge of an historic finish. But it's an old nemesis standing in the way with a different agenda today and bold eligibility riding on the outcome. It's the Devils and the Deacons getting ready to roll. Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Five Hour Energy. Today you're watching the ACC on ESPN. Well, it's been 72 years since Duke enjoyed a nine-win season. Today a chance to match that school record and build some momentum towards a possible ACC championship game. We know that Florida State will be in the final out of the Atlantic Division, the Coastal Still a bit of a cluster in the middle there. You got five teams that could tie for first place, but it is Dukes to win or lose as they head into these final two games of the season. The architect of the Durham Renaissance, David Cutcliffe, going for those nine wins. The last time that happened was back during World War II, and he's also trying to match what Coach K did in his sixth season with the Duke basketball team and that's win an ACC championship. Wake won the toss, they deferred, so Duke will receive the kickoff here this afternoon. Beth Mullins, Joey Galloway, and Paul Carcaterra with you. And Duke will have it out across the 25 to get things started today as we welcome you to Winston-Salem. And it has already been an historic season at Duke, Joey, but an opportunity to make even more and get even better now with a couple of rivalry games to finish their regular season. Absolutely. It's already Coach Cutcliffe's first winning season at Duke. With a win today, they go to nine. Haven't happened in 70 years. They win the next one, ACC championship game for the first time in school history. All of a sudden, this small school North Carolina, which is huge in the basketball world, is now becoming a big story in the football world. And they will open things up through the air, and this is a connection the Blue Devils want to see all day long. Anthony Boone to Jameson Crowder. Well, Boone is the 6'2", 230-pound junior out of Weddington, North Carolina. He is 8-0 as a starting quarterback. And even got into the Wake Forest game, had a significant role in their win last year against the Demon Deacons. He will split time throughout the day with Brandon Kinnett, their other quarterback. And a handoff to Josh Sneed, one of four guys they could use today at running back. Sneed gets the start, and Crowder's another big play man. Yeah, and Sneed's the home run hitter in the backfield. Crowder, wide receiver, very good at getting open out in space. Then Nikita Whitlock, watch this small guy in the middle, terrific nose guard. And then Kevin Johnson, the quarterback, look for him matched up versus Crowder. Whitlock stands 5'10", 260 pounds, right in the middle of the trenches. Trying to wreck some havoc. And on the rollout, Boone fires upfield incomplete on third down, and Wake Forest forces the punt. Zach Thompson was bringing the pressure. Yeah, you can already see. We talked about Nikita Whitlock. Look at him break through. That's a double team. Gets right past the center. Skura breaks through, drives Boone out of the pocket. That's what they're going to have to do. Make Boone uncomfortable. Get him on the run. Don't let him stand in the pocket. Will Monday, who has the best punting average in school history, back to kick it away. Jared Crump is the deep man, and he will let that one bounce a couple of times in front of him, and Wake will have it after a 39-yard kick uh, out uh, beyond its own 25-yard line, and that's where Tanner Price will start things off. The senior out of Austin, Texas, who has 62 career touchdowns, three shy of tying the school record currently held by Riley Skinner. Had a rough outing, though, a couple of weeks ago against Florida State. There's no doubt this offense is still trying to find themselves. They switch up a number of times this year, but Tanner Price is the key. He has to play well for them to have a chance to win. And the handoff is to Josh Harris, trying the right side for a couple. That loss that you spoke of is... Michael Campanero, their All-America candidate at wideout, so who will step up in his stead? A big story today. Yeah, Campanero leads the ACC in receptions per game. Who's going to be that next guy? It may take three or four guys to replace him. Then on the other side for Duke, their leading tackler, linebacker Kelby Brown, and then in their backfield, another leader, Ross Cockrell. 
Campanero out with the broken collarbone. There is a chance we're hearing that he may be able to come back and play next week against Vanderbilt. If they win today, that would be very meaningful for them with a shot at bowl eligibility as Josh Harris carries for four yards. And for Michael Campanero, he had a third of their catches and half of their touchdown receptions this year. He is Wake's all-time leading receiver and Tanner Price's favorite target by far. Yeah, and when Campanero's in the game, their goal is get him 15 touches per game. That may take four receivers to replace that in their production to try to, you know, just recover the production that he adds. Third down, they need the 37, and they will get it. And then some. Price out across the 45. Scoots 15 yards for the first down. DeAndre Singleton able to drag him down. And that's where Tanner Price can hurt you. If you're Duke on defense, you want to force Tanner Price to throw the football. These wide splits by their offensive line gives Tanner Price these running lanes, and he's very crafty, very good at knowing where the chains are, running the ball, tucking it, and getting a first down. We've got some company with him in the backfield. You mentioned the wide splits. We'll be talking about that from time to time with their O-line. As Harris looks for some running room and plugging up that gap was David Helton. They've tried a lot of different looks offensively, and this is one of them with the wider splits. Yeah, and you can see we're talking about these splits. We're talking about in between these linemen. It creates running lanes. When we said they're searching for offense, that's one of the things that they've experimented with. Spread out your offensive linemen, create passing lanes, and create running lanes. We've already seen Tanner Price tuck one and get a first down. It's because their offensive line is spread out, and here they go again. And they like the way that they can pass protect out of those splits, and certainly looks like a pass play here on second down. Plenty of time for Price and a drop that would have been good for a first down. Sherman Ragland, and he's the guy that they hope can lead the charge to replace Campanero. Yeah, and the first thing you think is Campanero would have had that ball. It's just natural for you to think that. Ragland is the guy that's going to play in the slot. Coach told us he should have double-digit catches. That's one he has to make if they're going to have a chance. This sets up a third and eight. That's difficult because Tanner is a guy that would like to tuck and run. Eight yards is tougher to get on third down. Third and eight. Tanner Price throwing across the middle, and he's got the first down. And the catch is made down to the 31-yard line by Jared Crump on a 19-yard gain. Yeah, Coach Grove told us that Crump is one of those guys that has become dependable. As they're looking for the searching for a guy to step up, Crump is a dependable guy. You can see it here making a big catch on third down. Tanner Price, nice job standing in the pocket. Nice coverage, delivers a strike over the middle. That'll move the chains for Grobe. Tied for the most wins in Wake Forest history coming in with 77. Could surpass P. Head Walker today if he can pick up the W. Tanner Price may have gotten one trying to dive forward. That was Jamal Bruce with the stop. A significant here for Wake Forest coming in at four and six. So they need this win today to keep their hopes alive of a bowl and an opportunity to end a uh, four season skid with a losing record after Grobe had so much success with that 2006 team that won the ACC championship and played in the Orange Bowl. Price off a pump fake, now feeling it, and down he goes, back at the 45 yard line, Justin Fox. One of three guys up front that's a fifth year or a sixth year player at Duke and a loss of 14. Yeah, when you look at these, this offensive line I and mean, when you look at these wide splits out here, it leaves one on one matchups. Everyone's out on the island by themselves. You can see Intamin in this situation can't handle Fox. Fox gives him an outside move, goes inside and gets to the quarterback. That's one of the weaknesses to keep your eye on in those splits. Each offensive lineman is one on one with no clutter around him. Fourth sack of the season for Fox, and now it's third and long. More heat coming right up the middle, and Price will throw it away. That was Kenny Ananicki on the stunt coming inside, and it's fourth down. 
Yeah, on third down, Coach Knowles draws up a, a blitz here, getting Tanner Price out of the pocket on the last, last third down to play before. They sat back. They gave Tanner Price a chance to stand in the pocket. He delivered downfield, and they got a first down. That time, bring a blitz, get him out the pocket, put some pressure on him, and you can see the ball had to be thrown away. Now let's watch the Duke special teams. They have three kick return touchdowns this year, and Crowder will stay away from it, and it will land inside the 10-yard line for Wake Forest. And a 37-yard punt from Alexander Kinnell. Scoring a serve. With us yesterday and feels he uses his height to his advantage because the low man wins in the trenches and he's able to beat offensive linemen off the ball with quickness. Duke offensive line coach John Latina told me before the game, Whitlock is relentless and his second and third effort on plays is amazing. His message to his offensive line, play through the whistle. Yeah, and uh, with that 5'10", 260-pound frame cart, that hasn't stopped him. He's fourth in the country in tackles for loss, 13th in the nation in sacks. And he loves nothing more than to hear from opposing offensive linemen post-game. Man, you were hard to handle today. And the run for Duke out to the 20, and that'll be a first down for the Blue Devils. That's Jalay Duncan, the sophomore from Charlotte. You'll see Duke roll in three or four running backs today. They say you can throw them all in the back. Doesn't matter who's in the game. We call the same plays. Incomplete on the quick hitter looking for McCaffrey. They have those four running backs, each averaging over five yards per carry. An interesting little note about them offensively. It's not offensive coordinator Kirk Roper determining what back is in the game. It's actually their running back coach, Daquan Boyette, who will rotate those guys in and out of the backfield. It's Duncan and Shaq Powell now with Boone here on second down. This is Powell stood up after a short game. Good push coming that time. From that defense, Nikita Whitlock was in the mix. Yeah, and here's Whitlock in the middle. And again, there's the quickness and the strength. He's a smaller, undersized guy, but able to take up two blockers, letting the linebackers come in and make this tackle. But the little guy in the middle, because of his low stature, he's hard to move out of there. Boone on third down. Caught. First down, Duke out across the... 35-yard line, another grab for Jamison Crowder in a 12-yard gain. That's his third catch already. Let's see, does he hang on through the catch? I think that Ooh. one might be coming back if they take a look at that ball. And maybe not. We're going to let it go quickly. The pitch to Duncan. He gets the edge across the 40. Good pop from Ryan Janvion, the redshirt freshman out of the secondary, a five-yard pickup. And again, you could see Nikita Whitlock get the penetration. When you go sideline to sideline, he is so good with his hands and so good with his first step that he beats his block a lot of times, makes, it, makes the runner stretch it wider than he'd like to, letting the support come. But again, Whitlock has showed up already early in this game in these first couple drives. From the 41 for Boone to Powell. They'll flip it on the reverse here with Crowder. And cut down around midfield, but that'll move the chains once again. A nine-yard gain and another touch for Jamison Crowder. They will move him all over the place today. When you sit down and watch film, you have got to locate him, and that's what they're trying to do. Just keep moving him around, make him hard to lock up on, make him hard to double team. We have one receiver that gets the ball so much, it's key, make him hard to find for the defense. Boom. Trying to cut it back against the grain, and he's inside the 45. Four Demon Deacons over to take him down. Led by linebacker Justin Jackson. Good vision by Boone here. Wants to go off to the right side. All of a sudden, season opening to the left. Comes up, makes a guy miss. Picks up eight yards. And if they can stay in this second and two, third and two range, they're very good on offense because they're crafty. They run it well, and they can pass it efficiently. And they're hard to stop in these short distances. That's a Duke offense that is putting up about 35 points per game. 
And uh, coming off that huge win against Miami last week, and a good tackle in the open field by Noel on Brandon Braxton. But an, another one of those monumental wins for them. They beat a ranked Miami team and had a huge fourth quarter to do it. And one of the things that David Cutcliffe has talked about is we need to be the best conditioned team in college football. And they have been close to it this year with big second half finishes. And here they are on the 10th play of this drive and it's third down. Crowder to the top of your screen. Boom, looking across the middle, the catch is made by Blackney, and the ball pops out at the end of the play, scooped up by Wake Forest. Thomas Brown running down the sideline with it. Touchdown, Wake Forest on the turnover. Scoop and score. So we have, a, have to take a, chance, a look at that knee of Blakeney on the back side here. Yeah, and I think you're going to say he was down, down by contact. Although, nice play by Kevin Jones coming up making an open field tackle here. But Blakeney, the receiver, you've got to hold on to this ball and take the question mark out of it. Just squeeze the football. And remember the ground can force an incompletion, but not a fumble. Let's see if the knee and the elbow actually may come down before the ball pops out. Yeah, the knee is down before the arm even makes contact with the ground. That split screen for you, those shots are timed up to be at the exact same time. Eight yards on the return that would have put the ball at the 42 yard line of Wake Forest Duke was trying to get a first down at the 40 yard line so as they review this if we think that the ball will be coming back that would set up a fourth and short yeah, you can see yeah. uh, on the and if replay I'm here in-house that they were short, he was short of the 40. Yeah, and if I'm Duke in this situation, I'm going to go for it on fourth down. I'm over on the sideline thinking of what I'm, what I'm going to call on this fourth After down. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Wow. Well, that's not the first time I was wrong. <laughs> Officially a 59-yard fumble return. And Wake Forest, well, we heard Jim Grove say that the defense was the strength of this ball club right now. And how about the D getting them six and now make it seven with the PAT with 5.02 to go here in the first. So a little controversy here in the first quarter, but it goes Wake's way and they take the lead. Ernie with that... Uh, Iconic swing to Wake Forest off of the turnover and the lead over Duke back in the rankings this week for the first time since 1984. Let's check in now with Wendy Nix. Oh, thank you very much, Wendy. Of course, uh, those ACC teams all just about everybody still in the mix for the Coastal Division, but it is Duke now with their other quarterback, Brandon Kinnett. They are in the driver's seat in the Coastal, but they find themselves down here in the first quarter to Wake Forest. Connect, 29 career rushing touchdowns. That's the most in school history. And he had the huge game against Miami. Four rushing touchdowns, one passing TD last week. Yeah, Connect is second in the ACC in rushing touchdowns. That's how good he's been from the quarterback position running the football. Off a of play action. He's going to throw it deep down the sideline, looking for Crowder incomplete. 
That one out of bounds. Morell Noel with the coverage, and it's third and 13 coming up. This has been something that's been going back and forth all year long for Duke with Boone and Kinnett both getting an opportunity. And they start off with two series for Boone to start the game. He's their starter. You mentioned he's 8-0 as a starter. And Kinnett has come in, and you can see the last play. He threw the ball deep, and that's the difference in Kinnett now. He was a runner. Now he's a runner and a passer. Junior out of Corona, California. Stepping up and in the grasp and down he goes. Desmond Floyd able to get him high and it's the low man that wins. Nikita Whitlock had the ankles. You see that's and that's and that's just a three man rush and you can see they get to the quarterback going with the three men. If they can get there and they can pressure connect with just three men leaving eight back in coverage. There's nowhere to go with the ball. That's the best way of your wake to survive three man rush get a sack eight guys in coverage. Monday to punt it away crump back deep at his own 30 yard line. And off the side of the foot of Monday and out of bounds and Wake Forest I think he's going to have this one on the Duke side of the 50 and they will wake with the lead and the football from the Blue Devils 47 David Cutcliffe uh, his club redefining Duke football is the way he describes it how about the last time that some of these things happened well the last time Duke had eight wins which they have right now back in 94 Bill Clinton was uh, in office two wins over ranked opponents Duke grad Richard Nixon was in office. Back-to-back -back bowls, oh, no president yet. But this year, we'll be, in a couple of weeks, they'll be able to replace that X with Obama because they will be, uh, in all likelihood, headed back to a second consecutive bowl game. They are already bowl eligible at eight and two. And this is Tanner Price working with a short field. And Price out of bounds at about the 45-yard line after just a 25-yard punt to set up Wake Forest. It has not been a strong start for the Blue Devils. No, not at all. And, and the question is, and you come out, you not play well. Everyone's talking if they win the next two games, they go to yeah. the ACC championship game. No one's focused on Wake Forest. You've said it. I've said it. Everyone talking about this game is already focused on the next two, whereas Duke has got to focus on Wake Forest, and they're off to a bad start. Second and short. Price keeps, and Price doesn't get far. Justin Fox with the takedown. Well, David Cutcliffe uh, duking it out, probably with Minnesota's Jerry Kill for the feel-good story of the year in the college football coaching circles with the success that he's had after uh, some pretty dismal decades of Duke football since uh, Wallace Wade departed uh, after tremendous success back in the 1930s and 40s. Of course, they had that brief stay for Steve Spurrier when they won a share of an ACC title in 1989. And the rollout, and the catch is made by the fullback, Garza. And the spot looks like will be enough for a first down to the 36-yard line, and Crump is the injured player. Got caught up in the pack at the tail end of the play. And we will take a timeout with 2.34 to go here in the If they can go out and play Baylor football, uh, play the defense that we've seen him play versus Oklahoma. They had a chance to win that one. So the injured wide receiver, Jared Crump, getting some assistance on the sideline. He'll be replaced by Orville Reynolds, probably their fastest wide receiver. Remember, this is a team that's already without their best receiver, Michael Campanero. And the tight end, Spencer Bishop, and the strip, but I believe the whistle had already blown the play dead. And an eight-yard pickup for Wake. And again, Bishop is one of those guys that needs to step up. He's a guy that can be reliable. As a quarterback, when you're struggling on, struggling on offense, you're trying to get your pass game going, a lot of quarterbacks like to rely on tight ends. They're bigger guys. They sit down. They're very good at finding pockets and zones. And you can deliver strikes to those guys. But tight ends have to step up when you're struggling in your passing game. Harris is the offset back. Price going to keep, oh, what a move 
move at the 25 for Price. And he takes it down to the 15 as he left Kelby Brown in the rear view. And a 12-yard juke. Again, Kelby Brown is one of my impact players. He's, he's the leading tackler for, for this Duke defense. He has to make this play. If they're going to have a chance to shut down Price, and we can already see Price's athleticism, we've already seen him tuck it a few times and get first downs, that's a tackle that has to be made by Brown. That's the ACC's leading tackler that Price just made with. And why not? He'll run it again inside the 10 to the 7. And a 9-yard gain. DeAndre Singleton had to come up from the secondary. And a nice block by the fullback, Jordan Garside, that took Kelby Brown right out of the play. Yeah, Coach Grove told us they're going to have to scratch for some first downs. And you don't hear yeah. a scratch. You don't hear a scratch <laughs> used very often by football coaches. But they're going to have to scratch for first downs. They've been scratching pretty good so far with Tanner Price tucking the ball and running it. Harris stood up right around the first down line. Justin Fox, one of the first guys there. Well, this is a... Uh, an offense this year for Wake Forest that Jim Grobe has not hesitated. You know, the, the mantra, if it's broken, let's change it. Let's fix it. And they've tried a lot of different things to jumpstart this offense throughout the season. And they had not scored a touchdown in their last two games. It's a defensive touchdown in the first quarter. And now the offense knocking on the door. Third down when we come back. But it was Thomas Brown with the scoop and the score for the Demon Deeks. Here at Wake Forest and the Demon Deeks in the red zone and the drop in the end zone. That's twice today that Ragland has dropped passes. And that one costly because that was third down. So now fourth and one. Yeah, and I stay on the field and I go for this. And it looks like it with Tanner Price's ability to run the ball, the success he's had so far early in this game. I like the play call. He was out wide. He could have actually run for the first down if he wanted. I do something similar. Keep the ball in his hands. Give him an option. But it looks like they're going to split him out wide here. Setting up for a direct snap to the running back, Harris. And Harris will try and run for it. And it's going to be close. Jamal Bruce with a good push coming right up the middle for Duke, followed by Kelby Brown. And that spot. I think it'll be a little short. I think it doesn't look good for yeah. Wake where it is right now. And I've been wrong before maybe one time, but I think. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I think this one looks to be a little short to me. That yellow line you see would be the estimate of where the marker is. The chains are out there to decide once and for all. And they do get just enough of it. First and goal, Wake. I'm having a heck of a game so far. Um, <laughs> it, it looked, it was the yellow line got me that time. It, they were short of the yellow line. All right, so now Jim Grobe has a few plays to work with, uh, trying to get this offense to punch one in. And really put the Blue Devils into a bit of a hole here. With all that's going on positively for Duke coming into this game, a bit flat here in the early going. And Wake trying to make them pay. Price throwing back. Touchdown, Wake. Had everybody moving right, and he sent Spencer Bishop out left. Yeah, really a nice design of a play here. Roll out to the right, make everyone think that this is a roll right. Tanner Price showing the athleticism, comes back. It helps that he's a left-hand throw because that ball is not across his body. He's going back left, drops one to the tight end. Nice throw, nice play call. Extra point is good, so Wake Forest takes advantage of a turnover for their first touchdown, and now the poor punt that set them up around midfield. They go 10 plays, and the last six gets them six points. 
for Wake Forest thus far. Up 14 to nothing, Joey. The turnover, the big play thus far. Yeah, and this one was, was questionable, but it stood. Put Wake Forest up seven. Big play. They've struggled on offense. They got to get some defense. And then the fourth down here. Get this first down, which sets up this play. The athleticism by Tanner Price to be able to come back, falling away, delivers a strike to Bishop to get into the end zone. So Wake Forest with the two touchdown lead over the Duke Blue Devils. That last scoring drive, they only had to go 47 yards after the short punt. And it will be back to Duke, and let's see what they can do with it. We've seen both their quarterbacks already today. And the return out across the 25-yard line by Devon Edwards. Let's check in with Wendy. Beth, thank you very much. Sports in it right now brought to you by Marmot. Takes us to the 130th edition of the game. 8-1 and one Harvard on the road at the Yale Bowl. Connor Temple here connecting with Paul Stanton Jr. 14-0 Harvard at Yale. Beth? Thank you, Wendy. Always a big one in the Ivy League, Harvard and Yale. And here in North Carolina, the Duke Blue Devils now, they've struggled thus far with the football. And they'll get it out to Crowder, who's been their playmaker thus far. Noel with the tackle, but here's what Duke has done. Three and out punt, the fumble, and then another three and out punt. For a team coming in averaging over 400 yards of total offense and 35 points per game and a lot on the line. A loss today would not knock them out of the ACC race in the Coastal Division, but it would take away the car keys and they would no longer be in the driver's seat. They'd need some help and a flag here on second down. Our referee today, Dennis Hennigan. There was no foul on the play for illegal formation. There were only four men in the backfield. Second down. And Kinnett in there at quarterback. Kinnett has to throw it away. He had some good time in the pocket, but then on the rollout had to hustle. Justin Jackson bearing down on him. And another third and long. Beth, and here's Whitlock. Moved off of the nose, moved out to the tackle position. And you can see, you think they're worried about Whitlock? <laughs> you think they're worried when you put three offensive linemen on one guy, that signifies you think that guy's pretty good. Trying to make somebody else beat him. Whitlock twice already, the ACC's defensive lineman of the week. And the officials are conversing. I think it's actually fourth down. And now they have finally changed. The chain gang has switched over from third to fourth, and they're just double checking here upstairs. And I think uh, a question after that penalty, and the down marker was not changed down on the field. The down marker was set incorrectly. It was actually fourth down. Fourth down. So it is fourth down, and the drought continues for Duke with their third down conversions, another three and out. And more work for Will Monday. Now, Jared Crump has been one of their kick return guys. We saw him get hurt earlier for Wake Forest, and it's mishandled inside the 10 by Kevin Johnson. Flags all over the carpet as Johnson is hauled down at the 16-yard line. And that was a booming blast by Monday. 66 yards.
Illegal block in the back. On the return team, number 15. Half the distance, two to go. First down. To Alabama, Florida State, they went out. They'll play for the national championship game. Alabama and uh, Florida State heavy favorites in their non-conference games today. And the pass from Tanner Price on first down to Sherman Ragland for the short game. And if you're Ragland, you've already dropped two today. That is a big catch. You want to get back into a rhythm, get the ball in your hands, get more of a feel for the game. When you drop balls out wide, you feel like you're out of sorts. You feel like the game hasn't really started. And he gets a catch there. Hopefully that's something that will carry over for him. Duke with that 4-2-5 defensive alignment. They bring their front four. And the pass deep down the middle incomplete. Is Price over shot Ragland. That's pretty good protection by the Wake Forest offensive line. Tanner Price is standing in the end zone. You know, they're showing a lot of confidence in this line. Tanner Price, that's his second pass from the end zone, standing back there, has plenty of time to deliver that ball, overshoots that one, but give the offensive line a lot of credit. Third and seven. And here come the linebackers, blitzing up the middle, and they will get to Price. Down he goes at the four, David Helton. Crisscrossed with Kelby Brown to bring the heat. Yeah, you just see this is a cross dog blitz with your linebackers. They're not going to let Tanner Price stand in there again. The first two plays, too much time in the pocket. What you do, Coach Knowles, send your linebackers after Tanner Price, bring him down. This should set up pretty good field position for Duke. They've struggled on offense. This could be key if they can get this ball on the plus 50 side, make it a lot easier on the offense. And Duke special teams now make a play. Crowder couldn't get it. The wind whipping it around. And Wake Forest will down it around the 47-yard line. Duke in good territory when we come back. They are live. The court's dormant right now. But every August, the pros come in here for the Winston-Salem Open. And, of course, uh, Wake Forest, a uh, good tennis program in their own right. Their football team right now leading Duke 14 to nothing. And they have held this potent Blue Devil attack to just 54 yards of total offense so far. And they might actually be taking a few off of that total with that loss. Yeah, and before this drive, Duke starting, starting was averaging the 22, their own 22. So this is by far their best starting position. If they want to get back in this game, you've got to take advantage of these situations, find a way to put points on the board, and losing a yard on first down is not the way to do that. Anthony Boone is back in at quarterback. Duncan is the offset runner. He'll throw to him out of the backfield, looking for a block on the outside, and he'll get inside the 45-yard line. It'll set up third and about eight. Janvion with the tackle. This Wake Forest defense today has done a really nice job of tackling out in the flats. On this last play, Janvion comes up. Plays before, you've seen Noel come flying up, tackle the screens out wide. That's a key part of the Duke offense is the screens, the quick throws out wide. You got to tackle, and the Wake Forest has done a nice job of that so far. Now they're going to line up uh, Whitlock towards the edge. Let's see how many guys Duke will throw at him here on third down. It's another triple team. Boone under duress. So many guys worried about Whitlock that the speed rush from Christopher Redding caused some problems. And here's Whitlock right here. And if, you, if you're a defensive lineman, the other guys, again, three guys paying attention to Whitlock, and you can see Redding gets the man-to-man. -man. You just have to be one guy to get to the quarterback. You've got to be extremely happy you have Whitlock because he takes up all the attention. You're always going to be blocked by one guy. You beat one guy, you get to the quarterback. Four three and outs and a fumble here in the first half for the Duke offense as a flag goes down. And the Blue Devils will down this around the eight. That flag is all the way back at the line of scrimmage.
Illegal formation on the kicking team. Five men in the backfield. That five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down, Wake Forest. Very uncharacteristic first half for Duke uh, with a turnover, with a penalty. They're hurting themselves a little bit here. Let's check in with Paul Carcaterra. Well, Beth, not good news for Wake Forest wide receiver core. Michael Caponero, you know the star, he's out with a separated shoulder. Jared Crump out right now with a right knee injury. It's wrapped. His return, questionable. And Wake defensive back coach Derek Johnson just told his group, guys, pinch in and make sure we recognize the inside game from a running standpoint. These guys aren't good enough or fast enough to beat us on the outside. Well, thank you, Paul. Down on the field for us today. The, the wind is whipping around a bit. We've seen that come into play. And, and quite honestly, Joey, both these teams having to create their own energy in this atmosphere here this afternoon. Yeah, when I was down on the field earlier today, you know, I thought as I, as I was obser observing Wake Forest, I thought, boy, they, I don't feel a lot of energy down there. But you look at what they've done in this game so far. Turnovers create energy. You get a turnover, put it in the end zone, it creates energy for your team, and they've played well. Tanner Price, they'll roll him out again, and he'll have to throw it away as Kelby Brown, the junior out of Matthews, North Carolina, was getting in his grill. Well, for Wake Forest, uh, on this season, the numbers haven't been good. They're at or near the bottom of the ACC in all of those categories. Getting a little boost from their defense today with a, a scoop and score on a fumble recovery. Coach Lobo told us their goal in this game, run the football. We have got to be able to run the ball and then pass it. This sets up a third and six, so it's a little tough here. Watch for Tanner Price maybe to tuck this thing and, and try to run for this, but running the football is key for this team today. Empty set for Price. Duke showing blitz and some movement Ball start. out on the edge. Offense. Number 63, five-yard penalty, third down. Dylan Intamin, the right tackle will set him back. Does communication become an issue with those wide splits, Joey? Is it a lot more hand signals or? Well, I don't think so, you know, because there's not a lot of crowd noise. I think yeah. if you're in a situation where you have a lot of people in the stands and it's crowd noise, you're at home, you know, it's not a packed house, you know, so they can probably hear me and you talk at this point. But, you know, they're going to be able to communicate by speaking. Third and 11. Now into the flat to Harris, breaks one tackle and then slides around the 19-yard line. That will be short in a six-yard gain. Nice stop by the Duke defense. This sets up another situation where Duke can get the ball in very good field position. They weren't able to capitalize the last time, had started on the 40, ended up punting that football. At some point in time, they're going to have to be able to capitalize because the field position battle is in their favor right now. Jamison Crowder has two punt returns for touchdowns this year, including an 82-yarder in an ACC game against Pittsburgh. And Crowder won't get close to this. And a shank will set up Duke once again in Wake Forest territory, even better than before for the Blue Devils. From the 43, and a cool, crisp day to enjoy the fire pit here at Wake. Another big uh, Sunday coming up. Also got the Cowboys and the Giants playing tomorrow. Another wild and wacky yeah. NFC East finish in the forecast. And out into the flat to Braxton with the catch for the senior out of Charlotte. Well, they got stagnant there for a while with their drives, but at least uh, the last couple, they've been able to move the ball a bit. And now, Joey, another short field for him here looking for some points. Yeah, and they got to find a way to get points on the board. You know, moving the ball isn't enough in this situation. You're down 14 on the road in your biggest game of the season. you got to get points on the board. Trying to tie their school record with a ninth win today. The last time they had that many, 1941. As Powell gets the gain up the middle for the first down. Certainly on the outside looking in, Joey, the sense is they are calm, cool, collected, embracing the moment, enjoying the opportunity.
to be playing in big games in November, which have been a rarity over the decades for Duke. Boone connects to the 15. First down to Braxton Deaver, the tight end. 19 yards. This is a really nice throw by Boone, finding his, his tight end in the middle of this zone coverage. You can see it from Boone's perspective, right in back of the linebacker. Boy, that is one heck of a throw right in back of Olsen. Fast tempo and the spin move from Shaq Powell, the sophomore out of Las Vegas. Had that big touchdown, the 33-yard run against Miami, their longest rushing touchdown of the season. They'll stay in, offset. Crowder to the bottom of your screen. Boom, rolling out, finds Crowder, got the catch inside the five, touchdown! Weaving his way into the end zone from 10 yards out. The playmaker strutting his stuff. I watch Crowder, this was coach told us he changes directions better than anyone he's been around. Watch the moves inside, not, not afraid to go inside and gets this ball into the end zone. Nice job by Crowder, it's finding a soft place in the zone and then making guys miss. Got a nice block, uh, unintentional from the umpire on that cut as well. So Crowder from 10 yards out, give him 34 for the day, 10 yards shy of 1,000 for the season. And finally, the Blue Devils break through. Of course, around the country this weekend, you've been hearing an awful lot about uh, the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. Paul carcaterra has got a good uh, story for you coming up here in a second. One of the assistant ADs here at Wake Fair Forest, Bill Faircloth, actually played in the only college football game played the night of the assassination, playing for Wake Forest over at NC State. One of just a handful of games played around the country that weekend is... Wake will have it out at the 25. Here is Bill Faircloth now with Paul. Of his life here in Winston-Salem. And a piece of history with that game played on the day of the JFK assassination as we get uh, back to the action on the field. And there's Bill. And he will uh, be remembered here for quite some time for his dedication to this program and all that he's done and you know he mentioned that 2006 team and of course this week a lot of folks here in North Carolina have been making the parallel between that 06 team that won the ACC and really came out of nowhere to do it and this year's Duke team that is trying to win the ACC they have not run an outright ACC title since 1962 when Kennedy was still in office uh, David Cutcliffe trying to change the course of their history. A win here today and a win next week in Chapel Hill, and they will play Florida State for the ACC championship. That was a fun wake team to watch, too, in 2006 with Riley Skinner and John Abadi and company. Here's a third down for the Deeks. Gonna go against Wake, some movement. Ball start, offense, number 89, five yard penalty, third down. And that's a big call because it, it takes away the run option in this play. When you're third and three, the run is still a viable play call. Now when you go to third and nine, you're thinking pass. Now again, Tanner Price done a nice job in the pass game of tucking and running with this ball, but it just lets the defense know now this will be a pass play. tight end and read perfectly by the Duke defense led by their fifth year senior Ross Cockrell. You can see the play here. It's just a nice rollout to the right and we've seen this before where they roll out to the right and throw back to the left. 
Cockrell does a really nice job of reading this play. Doesn't go anywhere. Stays there, sees what the play is, reads it well. Two offensive linemen come out to get a block. He gets around with athleticism and makes a tackle. Third straight three and out for Wake Forest as the tide has turned now into Duke's favor. They'll have it at their own 30. Let's check in with Wendy Dick. Well, here in Winston-Salem, 14 to 7, but Duke scoring on its last possession and back to work here with Anthony Boone at quarterback. They've gone back and forth between both guys. Boone to the air, and he's got the first down out towards midfield. And the catch made by Max McCaffrey, the sophomore out of Colorado. And you can tell in these last couple drives, Duke is now starting to get into a rhythm. Boone has completed a couple passes, the one over the middle in the last drive, get a big first down, and then this one out to the sideline. Now they seem like they're in a rhythm. They're getting some momentum. After the pass, they go back to the ground and into Wake Forest territory for Jalea Duncan. So David Cutcliffe continues to mix it up. Of course, uh, Cutcliffe, his lineage goes all the way back to being a, a GA for Bear Bryant down at Alabama. His well-documented relationship with the Manning family. And success as a head coach in both the SEC and the ACC. One of just a handful of guys that has been an ACC and an SEC coach of the year. And Last season got Duke into a bowl. They will go back to back bowling. And looking to tie the school record with a ninth win today. And they are going up tempo, Joey. Boone gets inside the 25. And especially on this drive, they're having a lot of success on first down, getting seven, eight yards. Set up these second and shorts. Look for them to take shots when they get in these, in these situations because then they have third down to try to get the first down. But look for shots on second and short. Run Sneed right into the heart of that defense, and that means you're going to have to deal with Nikita Whitlock, and Nikita won that matchup. A guy who's just a monster in the weight room, and when he gets low and gets leverage, he can really affect the offensive lineman's balance. And he is going head-to-head -head with Matt Skura today, who was the one newcomer up front in that offensive line for Duke. Third and one. And Willock is again back at the nose. We've seen him earlier move out of the tackle. He's back over the center. They'll run up the middle, and they will get the first down inside the 20. Good power from Jalay Duncan. He was their leading rusher last year, led them in yardage coming into the game today. Quickly to the line. Crowder will be the guy down to the bottom of your screen. Boone looks that way, now back to the left. And slipping is Duncan. Gets inside the 15. And again, success on first down, especially in this drive, has set up the next two play calls. Again, they get six yards here. It just opens up your playbook on second down. You only need to get three to four yards to get your first. It opens up every call you got. Sneed in the backfield with Boone. Played in, Deaver goes to the left. And they'll run that way, boom, with the nice fake, and then jets out of bounds around the six yard line. First and goal, Blue Devils on a seven yard gain. You mentioned the offensive line for Duke and, and how much these are these guys have played a lot of football besides score of the center he's the only replaced starter for this season but the other four guys have all played a lot of football you can see it they're starting to get honed in now every play they're getting three four five yards and that's because the offensive line is doing a nice job up front 24th consecutive start together for those other four guys and here's their goal line specialist connect he has stood up around the four-yard line. How about Wake Forest defensive coordinator Brian Knorr calling Kinnett 
Tebowish near the goal line when we spoke to him yesterday. I had a chance to see Kanet down on the field before the game. It, as I was talking to Coach Cutcliffe, first thing I said is Kanet is a lot thicker, a lot stronger looking guy than I even expected. He is a stout guy. They got him listed at 225. He's an outstanding runner and has become a pretty good passer. But when he keeps that ball in his hands, boy, he is a grind-out quarterback. Well, and interesting here on second down, they take Kanet out and go back to Boone with Juwan Thompson, who has played both running back and linebacker this year. Boone throwing the fade for McCaffrey. Got it. Touchdown, Blue Devils. Max McCaffrey gets one down, good enough. Fourth touchdown catch of the year. He beat Kevin Johnson going to the corner. And Boone, terrific on the throw. And the officials are going to take a look at it before the PAT here. How about a 10 play 69 yard review, drive rolling on the field is confirmed touchdown. Well, after the early struggles for the Duke offense, they score on their last two possessions and a couple of TD passes from Anthony Boone. Ross Martin, the sophomore for the extra. And their career leader in field goal percentage adds the PAT. The joust goes to the wideout. Max McCaffrey to tie it. I'm, uh, I'm sure that'll include a little talk about Baylor, Oklahoma State coming up later tonight. Baylor, one of now, uh, let's see, six remaining unbeatens. And Tanner Price tripped up. As he got back to the line of scrimmage by Jamal Bruce, Duke has all of its timeouts if they want to use him here. And that's a coverage sack. Nice coverage in the back end. Nowhere to go with this ball for Tanner Price. Eventually has to tuck it. We've seen early in the game he would tuck this a little earlier and take off run, and now he's standing in the pocket, allowing the rush to get to him. Joey, you're surprised they didn't use a timeout there. They've got three to try and get the ball back here, at least force a punt. Price on the run out to the 29 as the clock continues to run. I don't think you call it. I don't think you call it if you're Duke. Not not that early. Not on first down. Wake Forest will call it here with 28 seconds to go and a big third down coming up for the Deeks. After they jumped in front, 14 to nothing. Got an offensive touchdown, a defensive score. I think if you're awake in this situation, you want to play it somewhat safe. You do not want to make a mistake. You've just given up 14 straight points. You get the ball back coming out in the second half. So I'd be safe with this ball. Make sure I do not make a mistake. Tanner Price says Duke will rush three and the throw incomplete. And that will stop the clock for the Blue Devils here with 24 seconds and a chance for Duke to get the ball back. Alexander Kinnell back to punt the fourth straight third uh, three and out here excuse me for Wake Forest under pressure Kinnell gets it away and Crowder will let it bounce and now Wake Forest will stay away from it and bleed time off that clock and Duke will have 12 seconds to go. Started off slowly, but these last two drives put 14 points on the board. That is going to be key for them to keep that rolling. They forced Wake Forest offense to punt it three straight times. So just keep that momentum going in the second half. First five possessions, 58 yards. Last two scoring drives, twice the yardage. Down to the first, 14. Now let's get you to Wendy Nix, Todd McShay, and Robert Smith for the Dave and Buster's halftime report. The offense and the offense got warm, put points on the board. David Cutcliffe toiling our uh, Paul Carcaterra on his way off the field. He thought their team settled down nicely. Their defense really started to dictate, too, and that's the unit that will be out there first. 
to take on uh, the Wake Forest attack from their own 25. How about some of those key plays for the first half? It was all Wake Forest in that first quarter. Yeah, and this was the one that got it started. This is a turnover. This is the first seven points of the game for Wake Forest. Get this one into the end zone. And again, it just felt dead. And then here comes Duke. Gets back into this game with Boone making a nice throw to Crowder. His big play receiver makes a couple guys miss. Gets into the end zone. And then how about the strike by Boone? Puts it up in the air where only McCaffrey can go get it. Nice catch by McCaffrey. Now let's see what the response will be from Wake Forest. Five first downs and five punts in that first half. They only mustered 100 yards of total offense. They got the Thomas Brown fumble return for a touchdown. But then Boone took over in that second quarter. Their last two drives were both scores with twice the yardage that they had through their first five drives of the game. Wake Forest, what's at stake for them here in the second half? Well, they are at four and six, so they need to win today and then go into their Vanderbilt game next week with a chance to become bowl eligible. Down to the field now, here's Paul Carcaterra. Well, I just spoke to Jim Grove, Wake Forest head coach. He told me offensively they've been absolutely anemic. He said they can't run the ball. It's not opening up the play-action pass, and they have to play conservatively because of the poor field position. Defensively, he said they have to recognize when Duke runs from the quarterback. He said that's the trigger of this Duke offense in that second quarter. On the injury front, Jared Crump, the wide receiver, he will not return to the game with a right knee injury. Well, and you see the numbers on Grove there. If anybody knows how to beat Duke and how to win against the other North Carolina schools, he has proven to be able to do just that. And he will get... Uh, Another set of downs as Tanner Price goes seven yards for the first. And that's been their best offense so far is when Tanner Price has been able to tuck the ball and run with it. We talked about who will step up in the receiver situation. They don't have a receiver with more than two catches. Only one guy has two catches. Someone has to step up outside to help take some of the pressure off of Tanner Price and running the football. He was responsible for 79 of their 100 yards in that first half with his arm and his legs, and he's got Harris open. Josh Harris able to stay in bounds down to the 30-yard line. Their best offensive play of the day. A really nice catch by Josh Harris for a running back to be going down the sideline, turn his body around, reach down low, and snatch this ball. Really nice athletic play by a running back. Harris goes 29 yards. Josh, the fifth-year senior out of Duncanville, Texas, over 2,000 yards rushing for his career. Price going to keep, and he won't be able to get away from Carlos Ray. Sophomore hauled him down. Nice play by Carlos Ray. Does a nice job of staying home in this situation. We talked about the offensive line and their wide splits opening up these running lanes. Well, Tanner Price is utilizing that, finding these holes. That time, nice job by Carlos Ray, staying there and then making the open field tackle on Tanner Price. Reverse, they'll get inside the 25-yard line. Sherman Ragland was uh, on the receiving end of that. He goes six yards, set up a third and short. Nice block by Tanner Price, hands this ball off and then leads around on the reverse, just get in the way. Just make sure that your guy doesn't make a tackle. Good job by Tanner Price, just getting in the way of Cockrell, not allowing him to get that back in on the tackle. Harrison Garside in the backfield here on third down. They need the 20. They'll run Harris to the right. He's got the 20, the 15, and down to the 12. First down, Wake Forest. DeAndre Singleton saving the touchdown, 11 yards. Yeah, they're doing a really nice job. They had the big, the one big pass play down the sideline. But besides that, on this drive, nice blocking up front. You can see the holes open up. You can see Garside, the fullback, getting involved. But they've done a nice job with the running game. They're finding these lanes that they're trying to look for with this spread out offensive line. Eighth play of this drive for Wake Forest.
trips left. Price is looking that way. Drawing into the end zone incomplete intended for Ragland who got his feet tied up with the defensive back. Uh, Jeremy Cash, their strike safety. Surprised to see Tanner Price actually throw this football. That would have taken one heck of a throw to complete that. Had open field in front of him. Thought he was just going to tuck it and keep running. Yeah. May have been able to get it into the end zone from 12 yards out if he kept the ball and ran it. He was their leading rusher in that first half. Second and ten. Price keeping all the way inside the five. Touchdown, Wake! 12 yards on the run for Tanner Price. Sixty-third touchdown of his career. Now too shy of the school record. And he's got Wake back on top. PAT is good from Chad Hendlin. And Tanner Price, the senior out of Austin, Texas. The nice hookup with uh, Harris out of the backfield for 29 yards. That was the big play on the drive. And Price will finish it off himself. And Wake is back in business. And on the ninth play of that drive, Tanner Price getting the defenders to bite on his fake, and he goes 12 yards in for the score. And the Blue Devils will start out around their own 22-yard line. Good coverage there by Wake Forest. How about the touchdown here, Joey? Yeah, if you watch Carlos Ray and David Helton in this situation, they're going to bite on the, on the play fake by Tanner Price. Tanner Price holds it. Here's your lane, and then this guy's already wide because of the wide splits by the offensive line. Talk about creating lanes to run the ball, those wide splits. That's when it comes into play right there. Defensive ends already wide, opens wide open. Tanner Price right up the gut. So now his counterpart, Anthony Boone, back out there. He's got a couple of touchdown passes today. First possession of this second half for the Blue Devils. He'll run the play fake, and he's got the first down yardage out across the 35 to John L. Barnes, the true freshman who they really love that youngster's potential. 15 yards. The first half was a tale of two quarters for each one of these teams. Duke starting off slow, Wake Forest getting off to the much better start. Come out second half, Wake Forest puts one on the board. Let's see if Duke can answer. Get Crowder a touch on the receiver screen across the 40 to Passes about the 42-yard line. Janvion was the first guy there. And congratulations to Jamison Crowder, who goes over 1,000 yards, the second player in Duke history with more than one 1,000-yard 1, season. He joins Clarkston Hines, who did it three times in the late 80s. And the injury there is to number seven, Morel Noel on the lay and the uh, whip got caught up. And Noel has had a pretty nice game Media so far. Time out. Here in town, Ernie Shore was a pitcher for the Boston Red Sox who led uh, the effort in the 1950s to build the stadium here in Winston-Salem. How about Ernie Shore, uh, Joey? A former teammate with the Red Sox of one Babe Ruth. And now the deep ball looking for Crowder, and he's got it inside the five. Touchdown. Speaking of Babe Ruth, the 58-yard home run ball for six. You could just see the man-to-man -man coverage on the back end. I don't know how many times I'm going to leave Crowder, the number one receiver for Duke, one of the best receivers in the ACC, and a man-to-man -man coverage downfield. Nice throw by Boone. I believe that's his 10th straight completion and his third touchdown during that streak. Nice toss out there. Jamison Crowder, they're taking a look as to whether or not the knee was down. But on the snap, the play will stand. 
And the PAT is good from Ross Martin Crowder, his second touchdown catch of the day. Three TD strikes for Anthony Boone. This one on his 10th straight completion. Duke ties it up. Boone to Crowder. 77 yards on the drive that took less than a minute and it's the second TD of the day for Crowder. And a week after Brandon Kinnett at quarterback scored five times for Duke, now their other QB, Anthony Boone, three touchdowns today, all coming through the air. As Kinnett's role has been uh, diminished a little bit because of Boone's success so far. Kyrie Harris with the kick return out to about the 16-yard line. Here is our moment of brilliance brought to you by K Jewelers. Beth, you see the long touchdown. I think if you look outside, I think this is a zone coverage. The safety is supposed to stay back deep, not let anybody behind him. As you can see, Crowder comes down the field here, runs the post route, no safety help in the middle for a touchdown. And I know, Joey, that uh, as a former wide receiver, you have an issue with DBs that don't do anything to knock a wide receiver off his intended path or don't take away any of his options, which appeared to be the case there with the coverage. Yeah, and that's what makes me think it was a zone coverage. Anytime the corner's playing an outside leverage, if you're watching coverage, the first indicator that it's a man coverage is the leverage by the defender. They're usually on the inside. If they're not inside, they're expecting help inside. You can see the safety just didn't stay back. Well, this Wake Forest offense, they looked good on their last possession, a 75-yard scoring drive. And they've got a long field in front of them here on second down for Price. He'll give to Harris. Short gainer there. Down to Paul Carcaterra. After the last Wake Forest touchdown, Duke defensive back Ross Cockrell was critical of his teammate freshman DeAndre Singleton. He said to him, what did we talk about in meetings? Recognize the wheel route. There should have been a pick six on that last possession, he said. This is the same guy when he sees youngsters on campus, he'll quiz them. And when he feels like they're just memorizing calls, he makes them explain in detail so they understand the entire concept. This guy's like another coach out there. Well, and he's got to be, Paul, as the only returning starter in the secondary. Sometimes he's playing with three freshmen beside him. They've got four rookies on their two deep in the defensive backfield. And Price scrambles for the first down for Wake Forest. Four-yard gain. This is a Duke team that has been forced, Joey, on more than one occasion. In fact, three times this year, they have had to rally and come from behind in the fourth quarter of games. Yeah, and Coach told us that they've just played well in fourth quarters. And, and that's just, that's a smart football team. They got some young guys mixed in. They have just found ways to win these games because they've played pretty good football in the fourth quarter. They've still got uh, eight minutes to take care of in the third, and Price trying to get Wake Forest back on top, throwing deep down the sideline. Incomplete. Well, with the fourth quarter starting to uh, get a little bit closer through the front windshield for Duke and Wake Forest, one of the first things that David Cutcliffe wanted to change when he arrived at Duke six years ago was to be able to finish stronger. And, his quote this week to us, he said, I inherited the softest, fattest football team I've ever seen. And they started running, and they haven't stopped. He says, even today, as we're starting to get more success on the field, we still run every day in practice so that we are strong late in games. And that has been one of the keys to their success this year. Yeah, he said they lost 600 pounds <laughs> since yeah. he's been here. Uh, that he was that in, first team. Yeah, yeah, sees his team and says, look, these guys are so soft. 600 pounds, somebody's counting and paying attention. How much weight can we cut off these guys, get them in better shape? And you can see and that shows up in the fourth quarter. That's that time of game. You got to dig down deep, and the most conditioned team wins games. Third down, Price, plenty of time, looking for Harris. 
There's one of those wheel routes that Russ Cockrell was just talking about, and David Helton throwing the blanket on Harris. And we just seen Harris on the last drive catch one of these balls down the sideline. A little bit of contact there yep. by Helton, but I think as the receiver out wide, you have to force the official to make that call. Use your body, get into the defender, and it makes a call by the by official. Here, he just keeps drifting. That's an easy no call. Crowder has not had an opportunity at a return yet today. Alexander Kittle going to put it Jamison's way, and the fair catch signal is up at the 30-yard line. 40 yards on the punt. Oklahoma State averages 40 points per game. Anthony Boone back in at quarterback. Three touchdown passes today, and he's got a big play here to Jay Duncan out around the 45. First down, a nice block by Isaac Blakeney, the wide receiver on the edge. It's going to be interesting with Duke and their, and their quarterback rotations. With Boone rolling the way he is, as a coach, do you bring in Connett? Because they usually go two series and then get Connett in the game. It's going to be interesting to see if they'll do that with Boone rolling the way he is. I think we saw Connett for a play down near the goal line. That's uh, been about it. Duncan with the gainer out to, to midfield. Mike Olson with the tackle. The quarterbacks have combined uh, to have played in 64 games over the course of their careers. They're both over 1,000 yards passing this year. They both missed at least one game with an injury. Boone missing three. And he's got Crowder inside the 45 in the forward progress. will give him the first down. Both are uh, pretty accurate, too, around 63%. But the total touchdowns leaning Connett's way because of his uh, goal line capabilities running the football. And I think Connett has improved in the passing game so much that he's changed the, he's changed the conversation. Before, he was just bringing men if we need the one yard, the two yards. Now he comes in in passing situations and plays a lot more. Connett again with the pass from Deaver, the uh, block rather from Deaver, the tight end who had lined up in the slot. How about nine catches now, Joey, for Jamison Crowder? And I expected him to get a lot more attention by the defense from Wake Forest. I would double team Crowder. He has nine catches in this game. I think the next guy has two, which maybe McCaffrey out on the yep. sideline has the two catches. It, you know, one of them was a touchdown. But if I'm the Wake Forest defense, I'm taking Crowder away from Boone and make him go somewhere else. He's over 100 yards again today. Deaver got the catch inside the 25. First down Wake Forest for Braxton Deaver, whose father played football at Wake Forest. And now he's starring for Duke. Braxton actually went with his father to the Orange Bowl back in 2006 to watch Wake Forest play. And now Deaver trying to play in a BCS bowl of his own. To the end zone, Crowder incomplete. Run out of bounds that time, and you called it, Joey. There were two black jerseys around him that time as we check in with Paul Carcaterra. Well, as we see this Duke offense emerging from a wide receiver standpoint, bad news for Wake Forest. Merrill Noel, their starting corner, he is out for the game with a left ankle injury. He iced it. He tried to put pressure on it, and no such luck. Thank you very much, Paul. His replacement, Alan Ramsey, is the guy that got burnt with the deep ball. And a big opening for Boone. He's got room inside the 10 looking for a block. And tossed out around the three. First and goal, Duke, 20 yards on the run. Nice block by Matt Skura, the center. We talked about him being the only new offensive lineman for Duke in this season. Gets downfield, makes a nice block, opens it up for Boone, and then the athleticism. Again, the official getting in the way of the defense again. <laughs> but Boone makes a nice play breaking outside. And here's Kinnett in at quarterback. They will run him right. Connect 
won't get there. Held up around the two-yard line. Justin Jackson, one of the guys there. Brandon Carnett, the receiver. Along with Zach Thompson. Second and goal. He's got 25 total touchdowns, 12 rushing, 13 passing. One more would tie Anthony Dillwig's record from the 1988 season. And Boone also is on the field. He lines up as the receiver to the left. Connect keeps it. Connect scores. Touchdown of the year for Brandon Connect to tie the school single season record. And he's got Duke on top. Duke, they've been going dual QBs all season, so why not both of them on this scoring drive? Boone with the run to set up Connect from three yards out. He bowls his way in. It up, Boone, as they tag team on that drive for Duke to grab the lead. And let's uh, check in with the student. Boy, that is a, uh, even if you're not directly a Chicago Bulls fan. As a basketball fan, that's tough to see. Derek Rose, who of course was out all last year trying to come back for Chicago. And now Wake Forest finding themselves trailing for the first time today. And they'll get a shot in the arm here from a pass interference penalty. On Breon Borders. on the coverage of Jonathan Williams. Pass interference on the defense, number 31. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Borders, one of those true freshmen in the secondary. Now, I think it was the grab before the actual ball got there that Borders got back into position, but nice call by the, by the official. He definitely grabbed onto the jersey to get into position to make a play on the ball. on the play action. Throws downfield across midfield, incomplete, intended for Sherman Ragland. Yeah, the ball definitely doesn't get out there, but nice play call, nice, nice route by Ragland. Talked about him earlier, had the two drops, then made a couple catches. This one, a play on the sideline, he's open. Tanner Price just ha has got to deliver this ball and give him a chance to make a play. Price just seven for 18 through the air, 77 yards. As they continue to miss Michael Campanero. Now their last two games without camp, Price four interceptions and hitting on just 39% of his passes without his favorite target. He has come in and uh, sparked the offense a little bit better today as Campanero watching from the sideline, hopeful to be back possibly to play next week after the broken collarbone at Syracuse. Yeah, and you mentioned the passing here today, and this sets up a third and seven, another passing down. I think the best case scenario for Wake Forest, set up in a passing situation and see if Tanner Price can find one of those running lanes and keep the ball in his hands on the ground for a first down. Foreman coming after Price, drops it off underneath to Ragland, lunging for the first down marker, which is just on the other side of midfield, but there is also a penalty flag. Offside on the defense, number 92. Penalty is declined, result of the play is the first down. So a couple of inner, a uh, couple of penalties here on this drive on the Duke defense, helping Wake move downfield. 
And the lunge across appears to be enough for the yardage there, and they'll go ahead and take the play. First and 10. Harris gets to the outside. Nice play out in the open field there to make the tackle. Breon Borders, six yards on the pickup. Nice blocking up front, and then nice play by Harris. Making a couple guys miss, getting his ball out wide. And then Borders comes up, makes an open field tackle. Corner on a running back, that, that's a tough play to make with that much open space, but Borders does a nice job getting him down. 14 carries now for Josh Harris for 53 yards. He comes in motion, and alongside his quarterback. It's Harris again. Jordan DeWalt on Dijo with the tackle. Third down and a couple. Price keeps, and he's got the first down to keep the drive alive. Under 40 seconds to go here in the third. Wake driving to try and tie it up. These third and shorts, the offensive line takes the tighter splits. They don't want to leave these gaps on, on short downs. They don't want to give you know the, the, the Duke defense a chance to shoot a gap. They tighten down. Nice blocking. Tanner Price finds a little hole. Only need to get three. Gets about four yards there, but nice blocking up front. Price, catches made by Tyree Harris, thrown down around the 35-yard line. And that will take care of the third quarter. Who's going to win the fourth? The Blue Devils looking for a school record-tying ninth win. And they are sitting on their first lead of the day with a couple of scores in the third. The deep ball to Crowder and then connect. Short then into the fourth quarter here at Wake Forest. I am told that is something called zorbing. Yeah, that's what that's what that is. We, I, we used to do that back in the hood. I believe you need those kind of coveralls to be good at it. You have, yeah. the, you have the scarlet and gray ones, don't yeah, you, Yeah, yeah, we used to do that yeah. uh, back in Ohio when I was a young kid. <laughs> Beth Bowens along with the uh, former Buckeye great, Joey Galloway, Paul Carcaterra with us as we head to the fourth quarter and plenty at stake for Wake and Duke. And incomplete on the pass on second down. Good pressure from Kelby Brown. For Wake Forest, two games left. They got to win both of them to become bowl eligible. For Duke, two games left. If they win both of them, they will play for the ACC championship against Florida State. Third and six. Price protected, and he's got a man caught for the first down to the 22-yard line, Sherman Ragland. The coach Lobo, the offensive coordinator, told us that Ragland should have double-digit catches, and he's been a guy that they've thrown the ball to. That's his third catch of the day, but he's had a couple drops, two in a row now. Pretty good. First and ten. This rivalry, which dates back to 1889, has had plenty of close finishes in the last decade, and we're headed that way again, broken up by Kelby Brown, the linebacker dropping back into coverage. It's nice way play by Kelby Brown out in space. You said he leads the ACC in tackles. Here he is back in pass coverage. If he doesn't make that play, that's a complete pass by Tanner Price. Nice play by Kelby. The flags coming from behind the defense. False start on Wake. 
False start. On the offense, number 75, five yard penalty, second down. Yeah, you can see the crosstalk blitz about to come from, from the Duke defense, and that's what made the offensive line start to flinch a little bit. You see that many guys coming up in those gaps, you start to think, you know, who's my block? You know, I got to get out of my stance quickly. That many guys coming, offensive linemen get a little nervous. Again, almost got placed from behind and they do. Tripped up by Kenny Ananicki, the sixth year senior out of Glen, Ohio, on a seven yard loss. Here he is up top. Able to stay alive. And again, there, there's the wide angle rushes that you have to do with this wake offensive line. Enough athletic ability to still come around and get a piece of Tanner Price's foot and take him down. That was big, too, because it bumped them out of their comfort zone in terms of field goal range. Third and 22. Here comes the blitz. And there goes Price all the way back at the 48-yard line. Anna Nicky got him. But it was Corbin McCarthy who was flashing off the edge and a 13-yard loss. Yeah, another blitz. Another blitz, this time from the safety position. Coach Knowles, you've seen every time that Wake Forest has crossed the 50, he's sent to blitz. He's trying to get them uncomfortable, get them out of, it, out of their rhythm. This time knocks them out of field goal range and gets the ball back. Big from the Duke defense. The last two plays, 20 yards in the wrong direction for the Demon Deeks, who will down this punt inside the five. Anthony Boone, three touchdown passes on the day. He'll go back to work. Ways away, BB and T field. Duke with the lead and the football, a long way from home at their own five. And Nikita Whitlock, no sir indeed, Nikita, as he belts it out. And it's been a while since we've seen since we've seen Whitlock make a play. This time fights off the, the double team, stays right in the middle. They weren't able to root him out of there again. He is shorter than most offensive linemen. Low man wins in football, does a nice job holding his ground and making the tackle. They just love his effort as he brings it on every play. Second and 10, Josh Sneed now in a tailback. Out of the end zone for Boone and completes it to Barnes. And John L. Barnes has a first down for Duke. Let's check in with Wendy Nix. 31-19. I wonder that Miami team could still get a share of a division title. They would need a Duke loss to do it. But the Blue Devils right now, if the score holds for them, they will head into North Carolina next Saturday with an opportunity to win the division and play for the ACC championship. A win here today would match the school record of nine wins. They would have a chance to break that in Chapel Hill. And one of the terrific rivalries in college athletics would get ratcheted up a notch. They shared one in 1989. They have not won one outright since 1962. There's only been two teams from the Coastal Division to play an ACC championship game. That's Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. Duke with a chance to be that third team. And again, that's that thing that vaults them to the national spotlight. You know, not just uh, something done here at Duke, but something national if they can get into the championship game. Boone on third and five. The completion and the tackle to prevent the first down. Thomas Brown, who had the fumble recovery for a touchdown in the first quarter, makes the stop. So an opportunity here now for Wake to flip the field. Kevin Johnson back around his own 35-yard line as Will Monday gets set to punt it away. That one sails out of bounds. And at the foot of the Pac-12 title game, 
the Buckeyes can also get into the Big Ten championship game with a win today. And I think, uh, let's see, uh, Michigan State as well with a win today. Buckeyes may need that matchup to improve their strength of schedule to stay in the championship chase for the BCS title game. Still looks like they would need Alabama or Florida State to lose a game. False start, offense, number 73. Five yard penalty, second down. And Stephen Chase with the false start which is their second false start in the last two drives. And I think that the defensive line from Duke and Nikki, especially on that right side of defensive line, has started playing very well in these past two drives. A couple sacks, gotten some pressure, tackles for loss, and I think it's shaking up this offensive line from Wake Forest. Price, across the middle, caught out around the 44. First down, Wake Forest. 19 yards to Tyree Harris. There was a flag thrown initially, but it looks like that has been picked up. Is there a hold right there on, on a Nikki on the takedown? Is not called. Harris. Running to his left, picks up a few. Dwayne Norman with the tackle. Under nine minutes to go. mentioned the play of the defensive line for Duke and then and then here they come up with a nice play here Justin Fox coming across staying alive nice hustle coming from the other side of the field come across get a hit get that ball out on the ground this is a big play because give the ball back to Duke near the 50 yard line and that's what happened in the second quarter when they turn things around they start getting good field position this flips field position gives Duke the ball back with an optimal chance to score it was Fox that finished off Harris. It was DeAndre Singleton who got the first hit on him. And a nice move by Powell for extra yardage. Well, we mentioned earlier about David Cutcliffe and his lineage leading the Renaissance in Durham for Duke football and a, a career that started with Bear Bryant down at Alabama. We asked him this week, what do you think the Bear would love about Duke football this season? And one of the things he told us was he would love how we hit hard. And they did right there to force the turnover. Your defense getting the job done to get the ball back. And a sustained drive right here, Joey, may be the finishing touches. Yeah, absolutely. And the success on first down, picking up seven yards on that first down. Again, it gets you in that second and two, second and three area. And the way Boone has played, it takes all the pressure off the quarterback because it opens up the playbook. Joey Duncan up the middle. We have seen from Duke... Uh, Boone, for the most part, from the 10-yard line to the other 10-yard line. We've seen Connect come in short yardage at the goal line. Connect with a touchdown run today. Boone with three touchdown passes for their double trouble at quarterback.
When you talk about a team effort, they've run in four different guys at tailback. We've seen a handful of guys at receiver catch passes today. Here's Paul Carcaterra. On that tackle, Nikita Whitlock, he was spirited that last time out. He told his unit after their last stop, we're going to win this game because of defense. We need stops. We need takeaways. Defensive coordinator Brian Noor's message was a lot clearer in terms of the way that he needs to defend the pass. He said if Duke does decide to pass, watch between the hashes. Well, thank you, Paul. And as we've mentioned, they need this win to make next week's game against Vanderbilt meaningful for bowl eligibility. Otherwise, Wake is looking at a fifth consecutive losing season. Boone, a little misdirection. He'll keep it, get inside the 30. Taken down there by Jan Beyond and Thomas Brown. And this play has opened up because of the success of the run game. And we have not said enough today about how well their offensive line has played up front with their blocking. Look at Cofield, Harding, Spur, Thomason, and Simmons. Those guys have blocked extremely well, and that's why those plays work. You have to respect the run game because the offensive line has opened up holes for the running backs. Third and three. flag and I think maybe uh, the Duke lineman got a little jittery after hearing your positive comments Joey. Well, sorry. Offense number 62 five yard penalty third down. You rarely see a center get a false start yeah. get a false start call. He has the ball. He, he has nowhere to they always say look at the ball. No one has a better view of it than the center. He's got it again, except uh, now it's third and eight. And a timeout taken here by Wake Forest. We will take it with him. 5.16 to go. Duke on top of touch. PP out again today, but they need a stop right here. It's third down for Duke. Trying to roll down the field to clinch this one, and they will get the conversion on the third down pass to Brandon Braxton. But a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. It's coming back. Cody on the offense, number 74. 10 yard penalty, third down. Let's see if this is a hold on Mr. Whitlock. And it is. We've seen double and triple teams and still can't contain Nikita Whitlock. That'll cost them first down yardage. Third and 18. Boone drops it off underneath to Powell, and he will not get to the marker with 4.45 and counting to go. They would be within field goal range of their kicker, Ross Martin, and they will give him a shot at it. How about the wind issue today? Well, down atop the goalposts, it doesn't look bad at all. But as you get higher up to the uh, American flag, it's a lot more fierce. 48-yard attempt. No good, and Wake Forest will have an opportunity with four minutes and 11 seconds. Down a touchdown. Martin from 48 yards couldn't connect. Wake still in business. Networks at some point today. The biggest of which would be Baylor and Oklahoma State. So here we go with 4-11 to play. Wake down a touchdown. They need to win this game to play for a bowl bid next week against Vanderbilt. And of course, on the Duke side, they are trying to tie the school record with a ninth win of the season. 
and head into Chapel Hill next week with a chance to win the bid to get into the ACC championship game out of the Coastal. Tar Heels are doing their job today. They are mauling Old Dominion on their way to a fifth win in a row. Pass deflected and batted back by that front line. I think it might have been Justin Fox who got it. Beth, you mentioned the conditioning of this Duke team and how well they played in the fourth quarter during the season. Three minutes, 42 seconds left, up by seven. Your defense is on the field for a third and four. These are the moments that will define your season. You talked about this being their biggest game of the season and sets up the next game, but these are the times when you got to put these games away. This is what they've been good at. Five wide outs for Price. He's going to tuck it and go. And the second effort will get it for Wake Forest, out to the 41. Nice effort by Price. This has been their best play of the day, their most consistent play is Price dropping back, tucking the ball, finding a way to get up through the gaps. Here he makes a guy miss and dives for a first down. Under three and a half to go, Wake still with a couple of timeouts. Harris, who fumbled on that last possession, he'll get the carry to the 45. Three minutes to go in regulation. For Wake Forest in this second half, they scored the first time they had the ball coming out of the locker room and uh, have struggled since then. Complete on the pass to the 40-yard line. The coverage from Ross Cockrell and a flag down. There's a flag on the play. Our referee Dave Epperly trying to work things out. Holding on the offense, number 73, 10-yard penalty, second down. Second time in this fourth quarter for Stephen Chase. Second time on this drive. Trying to hold on to Mickey. Yeah, not, not much. I didn't think there was much on the one they called versus Whitlock either, yeah. so. You know, if that's the way they're calling, that's the way you have to play the game. Second down, and it's intercepted. Ross Cockrell, the leader on that Duke defense with the pick. Away of the fourth quarter for this Duke defense. And Nicky has played a whale of a game here in the second half. He gets the pressure. He's the one that gets the price, makes him throw this ball, and Cockrell just makes a nice play on the, on the ball. The importance of this play, is they're already in field goal range. They're up seven. There's only two minutes and 30 seconds left. Just protect the ball and put something on the board. Another record to add to the list for Duke this year. Cockrell with the pick. In the fourth quarter yet again. The 28-21 lead. They are now two and a half minutes away from a showdown with North Carolina in Chapel Hill next Saturday for the right to advance to the ACC championship game. The timeout. For Wake Forest, they will have one remaining. And how about our hardest working player brought to you by Polaris? And it's Mr. Crowder. Crowder's done a nice job out in space today. Catches that one, gets it in the end zone. Here's the deep ball. Concentration, reaches out, gets his ball into the end zone. You see the excitement, had a whale of a game today. He was their guy coming in. He's their leader. You know, he, 
10 catches, 121 yards. That's what they expect out of Crowder, and he showed up again today. How about the 58-yard touchdown catch as well? The eighth TD of his career of 50 yards or better. Wake will have one more timeout to use. Second and seven, Boone. And Wake Forest will use their final timeout with 2.17 to go. So, do you risk throwing it here no. on third down, Joe? Def definitely gonna... not, definitely not. You, you run this football, you get it to the spot wherever your field goal kicker is best at kicking the ball from, but you definitely keep it on the ground. And it will be Boone now, keep it in his hands. And the push forward, it's going to be close. First down, Duke. No timeouts left for Wake. 2.12 to go on the clock, and now it's running. And I'm surprised Kinnett was not the quarterback in that situation. I think it just speaks to how well Boone has played in this game. He's typically known as the passing quarterback in these situations, but they've gone with him. He's played so well. Center, he's run the ball well. He's passed it well. He's managed the game very well. And you've seen on a third and short when everyone would think this is Kinnett's moment. Boone, stay in there, keep the ball in your hands, and make a play like he's done all day long. Seven carries for 57 yards on the ground. 24 of 29 passing for 256 with three touchdowns. So barring uh, something very unfortunate for the Blue Devils here in the last uh, minute and a half, we will look ahead to next week. And the Blue Devils will try for the first 10-win season in school history dating back to the late 1880s. And they'll have to go through their arch rivals to try and get it. They got a big win over North Carolina last year. But in the last couple of decades, it has been all Tar Heels in that rivalry for the victory bell. How much fun is that going to be? Ooh. North Carolina Duke. Now, of course, if you said that out loud, everybody think basketball. But this one's <laughs> going to be a huge one for football. Ran into Jay Billis in the airport on my way in. And the first thing he said is, isn't it exciting that Duke is becoming a football school now? It's possible, by the way. Next Friday night up at Madison Square Garden, you'll have Duke, Kansas on the basketball court as the lead in to Duke football against North Carolina at noon on Saturday. I think we can make both. Ooh. If you, if you can get the private jet fueled up, we could. Uh, maybe we just come down here for the football game. <laughs> well, you think of how far this program has come over the six years of David Cutcliffe, who leaned heavily on his friend Mike Krzyzewski to sort of help out with the blueprint of how to build and really the administration that Duke has afforded Cutcliffe a few more years to get things done. It's been a while since uh, they've had a lot of these landmark moments and they reach another one today with their ninth win, the first time that's happened since FDR was in the White House. And the fist bumps underway in the final 30 seconds. So get ready. Chapel Hill. The Tar Heels will be riding a five-game winning streak. And the Duke Blue Devils will have an opportunity to play for the ACC championship if they can win on the road. 28 to 21, the final score. Anthony Boone with three touchdown passes. Brandon Kinnett with a touchdown run. Crowder, 10 catches, 121 yards receiving, and two touchdowns. The updated standings in the ACC, you know, before Cutcliffe arrived, they hadn't won an ACC game in three years. They're at five and two in the league, nine and two overall. And Joey, that trip to North Carolina, boy, they, they may not 
have made a bigger road trip in the history of this program in the regular season than the one they're about to embark upon. Yeah, I agree. And how about if you're Duke? Every single win is a celebration. You take another step that hasn't been taken here, and this next one, and I'm happy to be going down there to call it. I'm excited about it. Should be a packed house in North Carolina. Huge game for Duke. Great win today. Our final score, Duke 28, Wake Forest 21 as the Blue Devils tie the school record with their ninth win of the season. And it's off to North Carolina next Saturday afternoon. Here's Wendy, Robert, and Todd in the studio.